Hi everyone, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor, lawyer, turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 10, 7, and 6. In today's video, I will be doing a flip through of Real Science Odyssey's Life Level 1. This is a science curriculum produced by Pandaya Press, and I've been meaning to review it for ages. I have not gone to around to it until now. This will not be a review. This will be a flip through because we have not used this curricula yet. Now, if you're interested in videos about secular homeschooling curriculum reviews like this one, raising a child with ADHD and living a more essentialist lifestyle, you have come to the right place. So be sure to hit that subscription button down below. If you're interested in videos about any particular grade level or subject area, you should really head to my original page and then you can check in any of the playlists for the relevant information for you. Some of my earlier videos have not been categorized yet, so you might want to dig through the homeschooling playlist, but I am trying to get those all categorized as time goes on. So Real Science Odyssey produces secular science curricula and Life Level 1 is often one of the first curricula that a lot of people start with in their series. Level 1 is designed for grades one through four, and they include different topic areas, including the life curriculum, the earth and science curriculum, the chemistry curriculum, and the physics curriculum. Now, level two includes biology, which my fifth grader will be using this year, as well as earth and space, chemistry, and physics as well. So for my younger two kids who are sort of like kindergarten first and second, third this year, I thought this would be a good curricula to sort of try and get through. We have not used a science curricula in a dedicated, way where we stayed on track the entire year since we used Nancy Larson's um, life science when my kids were much, much younger. In the intervening years, we've sort of like pieced together science on our own. And I've been happy with that. I just for variety's sake, wanted to see what this would look like and if we could stick to a science curricula that has a set weekly schedule. So again, as I mentioned, this is a flip through. This is not a review because we have not used this curricula yet. And I will probably do a review at the end of the year as well. I've added a couple of tabs here, as you can see, for different sections. Um, when you open the book, you have this introduction. It is billed as both a classical and traditional sort of science curricula. It is 100% secular. You have different ideas in every lesson called the big idea and small stuff. It goes through what is life, living things are made of cells, the skeletal and muscular systems, the circulatory system, the respiratory system, digestive, nervous, growth and genetics, six kingdoms, and it goes through different types of kingdoms there, all the way through um, birds, mammals, reptiles, etc. Then you get flowers and leaves at the end. You have a materials list that is quite extensive, but it includes mostly materials you would have at home. For example, one of the materials is a plant with many healthy leaves or a rock to observe a wild area to study. So don't be alarmed by this giant list. There's also things like a chicken egg, which you would have on hand or green grapes, strawberries. Um, there are some more specific materials here, like a long tube. You could use a wrapping paper tube or a vacuum cleaner tube, a mister with water, a pitchfork to dig up worms. I mean, you can use whatever you want to dig up worms. You have here snail food, but that's basically lettuce, cabbage, ivy, cucumber. They've actually put a little star next to the things that you might actually not have or might need to order, like binoculars or a thermometer. That's a science thermometer, glass eyedropper. I actually ordered my materials from, I believe, home science tools or something like that. I will link them in the description box down below because I just wanted to have it in a one step shopping. I just wanted it sent to me so I didn't have to run around the house. I think one of the biggest deterrents to actually doing science experiments is having to run around the house. No matter how much people say that, you know, you should have all this material at home, it's easy to find. The hassle of having to get it and find it and locate it I'm just not about that life. So I really like that company that I can't remember the name of. So it will be linked down in the description box below. And if I forget, please someone remind me in the comments so that I can put it on there. Oh, here it is actually. It's called Home Science Tools, which includes a vast array of science materials from frogs to magnets. The best part about this website is that when you go to them, you can actually just search for the curricula you're interested in. So I just searched for the science materials that were needed for Real Science Odyssey's Life Level 1. It was one click and check out and I was very impressed with them. Everything came clearly labeled. I could put it all into 
I could leave it all in the box if I wanted, but I kind of organized it and put it away into one bin for this science curricula. So again, they have a suggested weekly schedule for you here where they list out exactly what supplies you need for that week and what the lesson lab is. I appreciate that they have this little extra column here for your dates or notes, because particularly if you're in an area where you have to record that type of information and show it in a portfolio, it's already ready to go for you. Have very clearly labeled exactly what material you would need right down to water, a dish, um, foil, etc. Moving on past the materials list and the suggested schedule, you have a critter care sheet because there is some collecting and housing of garden snails in this curricula. You also have additional reading selections. So for every single unit, books that are mentioned include both nonfiction and fiction books. For example, Greg's Microscope is included in unit two for the cell which is a fictional book, but a really good one actually. Then you have website suggestions, again, for the different areas. So if you were in the respiratory system section, you could look into this kidshelp.org link to look more into the lungs. So I really appreciate it when curricula have their supplemental resources all organized up front so that it's easy to locate and find. They do suggest that you keep a science journal in this curricula. Now my students keep a nature journal on their own. So that's pretty much what we're going to do for most of it. It gives you some suggestions like using your sense of hearing, close your eyes, what do you hear? And actually, if you wanted to check out some of these suggestions per season, that would be a really nice way of doing nature study in and of itself. This is the very first lesson again, what is life? So I'm just going to go back and show you what it looks like in your weekly schedule. So what is life? and signs of life is the worksheet that you're gonna use. So this is the teacher's guide and it does have the worksheets included for you. However, if you have additional students, you can order the supplemental student pages separately as well. And that's what I've done. I'm not gonna show this in great detail because all of these pages are in the teacher's guide as well. So what is life and the living lab signs one you have the plot study page, and then you go on into the next lesson, living things are made of cells. You have a worksheet page here with labeling, etc. I'm actually gonna organize these by week so that my students can reassemble them later into a notebook for the year. But here you have what is life and a reading section that you can read through with your student. And then you go into the materials and the procedure for your experiment. It lists the materials here again. It has a section that's bolded for you as the parent to read aloud. And then it goes into the procedure, which is clearly numbered. It also has hints for parents here. So for example, it says for bike and rock, let kids use their imaginations, but guide them to understand that bikes and rocks only move with help from gravity being pushed, etc., And they don't reproduce. They don't show circulation, respiration, etc. Um, so it has this little hint for parents here. And then it gives you possible answers, which I find really helpful, particularly if you don't have a background in science. So it talks about what the easiest characteristics are, and it talks about how your conclusion and discussion can go and what more lab questions you might be able to answer. So you have here a nice little chart for them to fill out. Again, that's reproduced in the student pages, so I am not gonna remove this. And both of my students have their own copy here. So you have a place for your hypothesis or your guess before doing the lab, and then you can go ahead and fill out your chart. The plot study again is organized in exactly the same fashion. You have materials, you have a section to read aloud, a clear set of procedures, conclusion discussion, and more ideas like starting a nature journal here. I like the formatting of this because this is how science experiments are generally formatted, where you clearly list out materials, you have a procedure, you have an area for your observations, and you have a conclusion, and you have extension activities after that. So I'm just gonna flip through this quickly so that you can see some of the different activities that they have for the students. Here you have a comparison of animal cells and plant cells, so you're labeling different parts of it, like the nucleus, the, the membrane, the cytoplasm. There's a human body section now where they get into each of the systems and you're making a human body skeleton of your very own. So you have skeleton cutouts, you have a section here that you can actually cut out on tag board so you can assemble a sturdier kind of arm model uh, that shows illustration of how things move. 
So when you set it up, you have this little arm and by pulling the strings, you're illustrating how your muscles contracting causes motion, right? Here you have circulatory system and blood. You have heart rate activities where you're going to be measuring heart rate and charting and graphing. Again, very useful skills to develop, especially if you're going to be a scientist observing things. You have the blood model here, different parts of your blood, talking about what different what your blood model actually represents. So you're going to do this with candy and sweets and lima beans. So red hots, caro syrup, um, dry lima beans and dry lentils. You have your respiratory system next. Some measuring where you're measuring breaths with different activities and graphing. The digestive system, again, labeling with a clear chart what the parts of your digestive system are. Just the main ones, very appropriate to early elementary. And it goes on to how food travels. So you're trying to figure out the length of your digestive system. Your nervous system is next. You have reaction times for catching something. So I'm sensible is the next nervous system lab. And this one is an exploration of your different senses, your five different senses. So you've got vinegar, garlic, chocolate chips, bananas. I think you're going to do some hidden taste and smell tests here. Classifying different critters. And these are fictional critters, obviously, so they can come up with a way of classifying. This is a great way of developing the understanding of why we classify and what classification really is and how we can group things and how it's also arbitrary in some ways. Like when we decided to create classifications the way we did, they were based on certain criteria, but obviously you are going to still have overlap and you cannot make it completely perfect, which is why we have some outliers in the, um, in our living things kingdoms. You have uh, the animal kingdom next. And I'm just going to flip through quickly. Here you have some jellyfish and worms, experiments, mollusks, snail anatomy. I imagine this is where you keep a snail for a little while. So definitely don't do that in winter. Find a time when you would have snails around. Butterfly metamorphosis. We did this this year and I am happy to do it every year because I thought it was such a fun activity. Um, arachnid labs, crustaceans. So I really like the formatting of this book. I like that all the pages for observation are already there for you. I like that you can get all the materials from that company in one step. So I'm going to flip through the rest of the book pretty quickly for you. But as always, you guys, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. I will get back to you at the end of the year with a review of how this curriculum played out for us this year. But I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be a nice, um, solid introduction to life science with a little bit more intentionality about experiments and experimental procedures. So again, this is Real Science Odyssey Life Level 1 for grades 1 through 4 by Pandaya Press. And I am an affiliate for Pandaya Press, and I will link all of that information down below as well, which basically means if you use any of the links down below for purchasing something from Pandaya Press, I do receive a small commission and that helps keep the lights on here and keeps me motivated to keep making reviews for you guys and to buy curricula for you to see. So I appreciate your support of my channel. As always, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it and I wish you the very best day.